Welcome everyone. My name is Sharon and I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Windward. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. In a few moments, we're gonna hear a great message, but before we do, we're gonna worship God through our giving. It's been over a year since Russia invaded Ukraine. To date, 14 million Ukrainians have been forced to leave their homes and flee to other areas within Ukraine, as well as neighboring countries. One ministry, New Hope Windward, sends thousands of dollars in financial support is Foursquare Disaster Relief, or FDR. Since the onset of the war, FDR has been working to get much needed resources to workers serving in Ukraine and neighboring countries so that they can distribute life-saving essentials of food, water, clothing, and medicine to thousands of Ukrainians displaced by the war. In addition, FDR is continuing to purchase vehicles to help transport emergency food and medical supplies into eastern Ukraine. Cities such as Bakhmut, under continuous heavy bombardment by Russian forces, lack much needed food, water, medical supplies, and other basic essentials for survivors residing in the few structures still standing within the city. FDR has been quick to respond by delivering these emergency essentials to areas ravaged by constant shelling, and your giving has made it possible to provide much needed help to thousands of people and families in distress on the other side of the world. Take a look. Because of your generosity and faithfulness in giving, we can continue to provide financial support to Foursquare Disaster Relief so that they can extend emergency relief on the ground to heavily hit places like Ukraine. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, God will give you much so that you can give away much. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise to God for your help. New Hope Winward, Thank you for your commitment to place the needs of others above your own through your giving. It is making a tangible kingdom difference for thousands of displaced and struggling Ukrainians who desperately need our help. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe and secure ways to donate, or you can scan the QR code. Also by clicking the button on the upper right hand corner of your screen, it'll take you to our website where you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Would you bow your heads with me? as I lead us in prayer. Lord Jesus, it is often easy to feel distanced from the devastation happening to Ukraine and its people. However, your word reminds us that we should never turn a blind eye to the destitute and those struggling, but instead initiate your heart of compassion by tangibly helping the weak. So in response, we gladly sacrifice and give towards your kingdom purpose to help those suffering in Ukraine. We honor you through our giving. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we're so excited that you're here for service. We have a special welcome gift for you. It's a New Hope Windward stainless steel tumbler. Simply stop by guest services in the lobby after service to pick one up, or you can text the word NEW to 808-736-3777 and we'll mail you a tumbler as our way of saying welcome to New Hope. We'd love to stay connected with you this week. The easiest way to do that is by following us on social media. Today, we have a great message. Would you join me in welcoming Pastor Dave? Good morning, everybody. Great to see all of you here today at Regal Cinemas. I want to greet all of you at our other eight locations. And of course, everybody joining us online. We're so glad that you're with us today. Would you, New Hope, join me in welcoming our church, Ohana, at all of our different locations and online? Awesome to see you guys today. All right, I want to run a statement by you and see if you agree with it. Life is full of problems. Would you agree? 
Yeah, right? Life is just full of problems. Every one of us has problems. You go through problems, and so do I. And I came across an anonymous prayer request where a person was describing the battles that, that they're going through. And I thought, man, I bet many of you could relate to this. I could relate to some of these. So here's what they wrote. They said, I feel like I'm in a war zone. There's just one battle after another. I argue with my wife. I clash with my kids over everything, it seems. I'm fighting to keep my job. I'm struggling with our growing debt. And I'm even losing the battle with my weight. And then there's these conflicts inside of me. I fight my own fears. And I battle with so many anxieties and even my temper at times. I feel like I'm always fighting off discouragement. And sometimes I just keep fighting to keep my head above the water. And as a result, I'm so tired. I'm worn out. Can you relate to any of those types of battles like I could? And, and because life is full of problems, we can get fatigued. We can get tired of certain battles that we go through. And you may be in a battle right now. You may be in a health battle. You may be in a work-related battle. Maybe you're in a relational battle with somebody at home or outside of the home. Uh, maybe you're going through some type of battle and some weariness is there, some fatigue, some discouragement from all the different problems, pressures, and maybe even the people that you've been having to deal with. And, and the problem is, is that we often, when we're going through these battles, we don't think we can experience God's goodness. But you and I can experience God's goodness even in the midst of our battles. So I titled today's message, Experiencing God's Goodness During Life's Battles. Not like, oh, you can experience God's goodness when the problem is over, but how can you experience his goodness in the middle of that problem, that battle? Now, if uh, you haven't been with us in the last few weeks, we've been in a series called Living in the Goodness of God, and we've been looking at Psalm 23 and how we can, here it is, experience God's goodness every day in our lives. Because God wants you to experience his goodness every single day and even in the midst of your problems. So if you missed any of those messages, I highly encourage you to check them out on YouTube or on our website because I think you'll find them very valuable and helpful. All right, so let's jump into today's verse as well as the final verses of Psalm 23 so that we can learn how to experience God's goodness during our battles. So Pastor TJ touched on this verse last week, but I want to unpack it a little bit more. And it's Psalm 23, 5. It says this. Let's talk about our shepherd. Our shepherd, you, you prepare, say it with me, a what? A table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, the, the Hebrew word for table is real interesting. It's the Hebrew word shohan. So everybody say shohan. Very good. What does that word mean? Any idea? It does mean table, but it's not just any table. It actually means the king's table. So watch this. God says if, if he is your good shepherd and you follow him, he says, I will prepare a shohan. I will prepare the king's table for you in the middle of your problems in life. And not only that, there's a little twist. He says, before me in the presence of my enemies. Like, God will prepare this king's table, this banquet for you in the middle of your battles in life. So you may want to write this down. The banquet for you is on a, say it with me. It's on the battlefield. This banquet, this feast that God wants to prepare for you in the presence of your enemies is on the battlefield. In other words, it's in the midst of your problems in life. And so I, I want to kind of take you into a scene to help describe this verse visually by having you imagine this. So picture this in your mind. Use your imagination. Okay, so you're a soldier in an army with thousands of people in your army. And you're fighting against an enemy. It's like you're, like in this image, you're on the front lines of the battle. So you're this soldier right here, fighting against this evil enemy army. And you're fighting for your life, literally. And you've been fighting for hours. 
uh, for, for your, your, your king, for your kingdom, and you're tired, you're thirsty, you're hungry, you're scared because you know at any moment you could be killed in this battle. And in the midst of the battle, your superior officer walks onto the field and he pulls you back from the front of the battle and you're thinking, what's going on? And he, he guides you about a thousand feet behind that battle. And you see this big tent that's been put up in the middle of the battlefield. And you're like, I didn't see that before. What's going on here? And your superior officer continues to walk you towards that, that big tent that's been put up. And you then are led into this tent. And what do you see inside the tent? You see the shohan, the king's table. And you're like, the king of the kingdoms here? In the middle of the battle? Oh, and you know, because you've heard about this table, that only noblemen sit around this table to feast with the king. Only important superior officers in the army get to sit around this table. And you look at that table and you see only two chairs. Okay, you picturing this in your mind? Okay, so I want you to pretend that this is the shohan, the king's table. Now, some of you guys are like, that's a pretty small table, right? <laughs> but this is all I get. I don't get one king's table, so this is all you guys get, right? But picture this as a king's table in your mind, right? And your superior officer then leads you to this chair, and he says, have a seat. And you're like, oh, me? He goes, yeah, this is for you. And the king? Yeah, yeah, have a seat. Okay. And you sit down. And you're like, oh, all of your favorite foods are at this table in the middle of the battle. And you peek under and you're like, oh, look, they get even spicy ahi from Foodland. Like, whoo! You're like, Yahoo! yeah. And you're so hungry, right? You're like, oh, I just want to grind this right now. And, and you're seeing all this food, and the, and the king hasn't come in yet, so you're like, oh, my goodness, there's blueberries. Mm, mm, there's green. Mm, oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, strawberries. Mm. They even have bread from Cheesecake Factory at the table. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. No need the white kind bread. We like this kind, right? <clears throat> That's so good. The sourdough? Nah. No need. And you're like, oh. Strawberry so good because you're tired, you're thirsty, you're hungry. And sorry, I'm eating with my mouthful. And then you notice there's dessert, there's malasadas, and you're like, oh. right? You're like, oh. you're like, and you move it so that the king doesn't see, right? <laughs> you took a bite. And then to finish off this feast, you have a haupia pie. Yeah. Lily Ha Bakery Bar. <clears throat> the best, huh? <clears throat> and you're like, you think you're in a dream world. Like, this is for me? The king prepared this for me? And you're just blown away. And then all of a sudden, you notice the flaps of the tent open up. And guess who it is? It's the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords, it's the king of the kingdom. And you're like, oh. and you get nervous because you're like, and the king's here. And you can't believe this is for you. You think, oh man. And then the king comes over to you, comes to the table. pulls up a chair, and then he calls you by name. How are you doing? Oh, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. I've been looking forward to this for so long. And thank you for all you're doing to fight for my kingdom. Oh, man, look at this food. This looks great, doesn't it? Oh, man, this is so good. Are you thirsty? I bet you, you must be so thirsty here. Let me get you some water. Mm, here. 
enjoy. Ah, oh, so how have you been? How's life? How's your family? Okay, what I just described for you is a metaphor of this verse. Our shepherd prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies, like in the middle of our battles of life. God has a feast for us. Is that not cool or what? And that's why this, I wanted to show you this because this verse is powerful. Whatever you're going through, God has prepared a feast for you in the middle of your battle. So you might be thinking, okay, well, Dave, what's on the menu? Well, here's what's on the menu. <clears throat> is what's on the menu of God's banquet for you? It's everything that God has promised you in his word. Every single promise in here, in this book, the Bible, is for you. Now, uh, scholars have estimated that there are about 5,500 plus promises in God's word for you in the midst of life and in the midst of battles. So when things are going good, these promises are for you, and many of these promises are also for you in the midst of your battles. And so God has these promises. I'll show you just three from these final verses of, of Psalm 23. This is just three of the 5,000, okay? Look at the very next verse. <clears throat> he says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup, say it with me, my cup. Okay, so what is, what is you anoint my head with oil? Well, in ancient times, if you went to go visit a person in their tent or their home, they would often honor you by anointing you with olive oil on your head. And it was a sign that you were important, that you were special. And oil in the Bible also can represent the Holy Spirit as well. And so when we see this verse here, it symbolizes this. Catch this. That when you are in the middle of a battle, and even if you're not, God has anointed you, meaning you have his favor on your life. You have his blessing. You are the honored guest. You're special. And you are anointed with his Holy Spirit. Look at the next part of that verse. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. What does that mean? This is a great verse. <clears throat> so picture this cup that God has given you. And it's overflowing. Oh. <laughs> There's like one demon on the stage behind me, huh? No worries. I got the king of kings at the table. So my cup overflows. Watch this. It's not just filled to the top. It overflows. Okay. What does that mean? <clears throat> this is a great verse. <clears throat> it means, catch this, that God's blessings, both materially and spiritually, will overflow in your life when you follow the good shepherd. Now, you got to follow him. If he's not your shepherd, and that's a choice for us every day. Like, there's some days we're like, God, yes, I've begun a relationship with you, but I don't really want to follow you and your word today. Right? So when we follow him, he says, your cup will overflow. And let me tell you this. The time you and I really need our cups to overflow materially and spiritually is when we're in the middle of a battle. Would you agree with that? And so when he's your good shepherd, he not only prepares a banquet for you in the middle of that battle, he also anoints you for that battle. He also overflows your cup for that battle to strengthen you, to nourish you, and to help you within that fight. It's awesome. It's beautiful. And then look at the next verse. Another promise. Surely your, say it with me, your what? Yes. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Okay, stop there. What does this word goodness mean? It means all the blessings of God's goodness. And there's just thousands of blessings of God's goodness in your life. God's goodness will follow you every single day of your life. It's not just when your problem is over with. It's right in the middle of that battle. His goodness is there. It also means, this word also means that God will extract, he promises, Romans 8, 28, I will extract some good out of the bad that has happened to you or the bad that you're going through. God promises, if you love him and follow him, he promises he'll extract some good out of it. Let me give you some examples of my life. So I, like you, have gone through problems in life, and I'll share some of mine just to, 
bring this verse a little bit more to life. So I've been through some problems, and I'm in no way saying that my problems are bigger than yours. I know many of you have gone through things far worse than me. Um, but, like, I've gone through things where I, I was robbed from a close friend. I, this guy stole $75,000 from me, never paid me back. Uh, I've been jumped and attacked. Um, and if you're worried about me, you should see those guys they in ICU still. <laughs> Don't be fooled by my size, you guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they kick my butt. Uh, <clears throat> I've, um, I've shared this before. I've been through severe marriage problems where I honestly, I just thought, I thought I married the wrong person. I thought there's no way that we're going to get through this. Um, and I don't say this in a dramatic way, but I've honestly been through countless health issues. Um, and I won't bore you with all the details, but everything from chronic pain to unexplained um, issues and disease. Um, I've seen, honestly, I've seen a doctor almost every week for the last six to seven years, almost every week. It's just unbelievable, like, what's going on? Like health battles, I guess you could call it. Um, <clears throat> I'm a parent. I've gone through parenting challenges. I've countless work issues. And my problem in sharing that is that I've had my own battles too. That's why I share that. But can I tell you that his goodness has been within my battles too. Now, to be honest, I didn't always recognize that his goodness was with me all the days, like in the midst of the battles. But his goodness was with me. Now, a lot of his goodness I saw later on some of, times, some of the times I saw his goodness within the battle. Because if you open your eyes in a battle, you'll see God's fingerprints a lot more if you look for them. But I saw more of his goodness in many cases after the battle. Um, and you say, well, what do you mean? Like, just an example. Every single problem I've gone through, there have been other people God has brought into my life for me to encourage them through that problem, to to point them to the king, to help them to share what helped me in that battle, to share what I learned in that battle. And it was, it was helpful to them, not because I'm great, but just because I'd been there and done that. And I'm like, oh, that was good, Lord. And it felt good to help others going through crisis and problems that I've been through. I like to say it this way. God will not waste your hurts if you follow the shepherd. If you follow the shepherd, he will use your hurts to help other people and comfort them and guide them to the amazing good shepherd. So he says, my goodness will follow you all the days of your life. Listen, whatever your problem you're going through right now, you need to say, his goodness is with me today. It's all the days of my life. And not only that, his mercy will follow me all the days of my life too. What's mercy? What do you think that means? It's his forgiveness. So think about it. Do you ever sin? How many of you by show of hands sin? Okay, yeah, great. Um, those of you who didn't lift your hand right now, you're sinning right now. Because uh, we all sin, right? <laughs> I sin too. I sin too. And, and, and check this out. His mercy, his forgiveness follows you every single time you sin. It's kind of like a mom with toddlers and like moms or parents of toddlers. You know when your kids make a mess and you're always like, oh, and I was, they made another mess and you're cleaning up their messes. That's what God does with our sin. He's like, there Dave goes again. All right, let me let my mercy forgive him once again. His mercy and his goodness follows you. And I love how it says, surely. You may doubt that he's forgiven you, but he has. You may doubt that his goodness is in the middle of your problem right now, but it is. Surely, goodness, your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And then here's the last promise. And I will dwell in the what? House of the Lord forever. What does that mean? That's heaven. That means you, Jesus, if, if, if he's your shepherd, you not only have his gr goodness and mercy and, and a table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies, but you will also dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some of you think, there's no way I'm going to make it to heaven. I've just sinned too many times. And this is God's promise. No, 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 no. When I'm your shepherd, you will dwell in my house forever. And that doesn't mean you're sinless. That's why his mercy has to follow you and I every single day of our lives. So th these are just three promises of 5,500 plus in this book. And this is why if you've been around here for a while, we're always saying, 
Read, self-feed yourself. Read these promises every day because you need to feast on these promises, especially when you're in a battle. And what will happen is when you're in this word each day, God's going to speak to you and God's going to nourish you and strengthen you for the battles that you're going through. Amen, everybody? Amen, amen. 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 So I want to encourage you to feast on those words every day. Now let's talk about what are some of the problems that keep us from making it to the table? So remember, this is prepared for you by the king. What keeps us from making it to the table each day to feast on these promises and spend time with the king? Let me just uh, give an example. Could I borrow your coffee? Okay, thank you. And can I borrow your phone? Okay. All right. What's your password? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. No, actually, I need your, your password. <laughs> Put your face up to it. Don't, don't touch. It's my phone right now. It's don't touch. Work. Everybody's going to see it now. <laughs> they can't see. Hey, don't worry. You guys think I'm like, like giving this vol volunteer a problem, but don't worry. This is my daughter, and you should see all the problems she's caused me, you guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's the chosen one. This is my youngest, so she and my baby. That's Mariah. Okay, so here's what we do is we go, oh, this feast, wow, the king wants to meet with me? And, and he has this feast of his promises in the middle of my battles, like, wow, and just in the middle of life, even when things are going good, and we see this and we're like, that's amazing. And so we're like, oh, let me, let me post this on social media. <laughs> All right, let me selfie this. Okay, let me put a skinny filter on that. All right, and then let me just post this, okay? All right. Instagram, is that okay? Okay. Hashtag banquet in the battle. Yeah. And we're like, this is amazing, Jesus. Thank you so much. Listen, hey, um, I'd love to meet with you right now, but I'm busy, man. I got to go to work, you know, and I got so many other things. Like my family's involved in choke stuff, as you already know. And listen, I am so grateful for this. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I, I love you, and I know you love me back, yeah? I know, I know. So we'll meet, we'll meet. But <clears throat> I got to go. This is amazing. I got to go because <clears throat> I got to go work. I'm just so busy right now. I know. So I'll catch you next Sunday at church. And I'll feast on your word then. Hmm? All right, and I'll try to check in with you before then, especially if I need you, okay? So take care, Jesus. Love you. <clears throat> and then, so instead of pulling up a chair at the table, we're busy. And you know what the enemy tries to convince us of? That we really don't need to pull up a chair at the table each day. That we really don't need to feast on his promises. And here's, here's the idea that the enemy will place in your mind and mine. And it goes like this. Reading the Bible, it's nice, but it's not necessary. Like, it's nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's God's word. It's good. It's alive and active, you know, sharper than a double-edged sword. It's nice. But it's not like, like, I don't got to pull up a chair, hang with Jesus daily. Like, I don't, because I've gone many days without doing it. Now, I want you to imagine if you had just one meal today and you did not eat until next Sunday. Okay, so you just eat today. After church, you go in the mall, you eat, but you don't eat at all after church. And, or excuse me, you don't eat at all for the rest of the week until Sunday. How would you feel by next Sunday? You'd be hungry. Last service, somebody's all angry. Yeah, I'd be angry too. Hangry. You would actually be, you, you would feel kind of like one person told me after church, they're like, man, if I, didn't, if I didn't eat during the week, I'd feel emaciated. And it's true. If you only had one meal a week, you would become anorexic to some degree, right? And yet, that's what can happen to us. The enemies convince us we don't need to feast on this daily. And so you got Christians that'll have a meal on Sunday and then they'll come back in the next Sunday to get fed and they wonder why they're struggling so much in the battle. And so what God is reminding us of, he's saying, hey, listen, I want to I nourish you and strengthen you in the midst of your battles. 
And so it's not just nice, it's actually necessary. Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. He said, you don't just live on food, on bread, but every word that's come from my mouth. Feast on my promises daily, and I'll speak to you. Enjoy my, the fellowship of my presence and my power and my promises, and you will not only survive in your battles, but you'll thrive in your battles. Can I get a good amen, everybody? Amen. So self-feed every single day in God's Word. That's one of the problems. We just got to pull up a chair and make time for Jesus. Here's the other challenge that we have, and, and that other challenge uh, has to do with um, <clears throat> some lies that the enemy will do. So what the enemy will do is he'll try to convince you of what he'll do is, let me say it this way. He'll try to pull up a chair to the table of your mind. And he's going to try to feed you some lies. And uh, one of the, here, here's what it'll do. Let me, let me say it this way. So he'll pull up a chair at your table and he'll, you won't know he's talking to you, but he's going to feed you some, some ideas. And so he'll be like, just in your mind, hey, how you doing? Yeah, hey, how's work going? Yeah? How's it working for Janet? Yeah, she's tough, huh? She doesn't really appreciate you, does she? Yeah. I don't know how you do it. If I were you, I couldn't work there. I'd go find another job. You know, like... This job is not really the right job for you. How's your family? Do you mind if I have some of your water? How's your family doing? Your wife's still mad at you? Yeah. It's kind of hard to please, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, no matter how hard you try, it's never good enough, huh? Yeah. I don't know, bro. You know her mom? Her mom doesn't like you. Yeah, <laughs> she don't like you. Oh, they talk stink about you all the time. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how you stay married to her. She's crazy, bro. She's crazy. <laughs> and you know that girl at work? She likes you. She's hot, too. Bro, she's hot. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> don't tell me you haven't thought about it. And what happens is, is you don't really know that he's pulled up a seat to your table because you're just having these ideas yourself, but he's feeding you these ideas. And so let's talk about how, how can you know if the enemy's pulled up a seat at your table? Here's, here's one of the lies that he loves to push, is that there's something better at another table. So there, there's another job that's better than your current job. There's another church that's better than your current church. There's another spouse that's better than your current spouse. There's definitely other kids that are better than your kids. <laughs> there's something better at another table. Now let's talk about this whole, for, for those of us who are married here, let's talk about this, especially if you're having problems. If you're having struggles and issues, he will really work you to think you married the wrong person. And some of you, maybe you can relate to that little imaginary interaction I had there about there being another person that is better at another table, but not the table of your marriage. And, and, and you start to think, like I, when me and my wife were having marriage problems years ago, I honestly thought, I've married the wrong person. And I thought, I, we're not going to make it through this. And it's just hard not to think that there's something better at another table when you're going through those issues. But let me tell you this. If you're married and you're looking at another person or you're actually getting emotionally involved with that person or you've actually crossed the line and you're involved with that person, let me tell you this. Who fed you those ideas about that other person to leave your family to go be with them? It did not come from your shepherd. It didn't. It, like he's tempting you to leave your family. And uh, what I had to tell myself in my marriage problems was that there's not something better at another table. There's something better at this table. We just haven't worked through it yet. I like to say it this way. The grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. The grass is greener where you water and fertilize it. Does that make sense, everyone? 
Let me say that again. The grass is not greener at another job. The grass is not greener at another church, at a fill in the blank. The grass is greener where you water and fertilize it. And so be careful when the enemy gets you to peek over the fence and go, oh, there's a much better table on the other side. Does that make sense? We just got to be aware of that. It's one of his key tactics. Here's, here's some other, um, well, let me just show you this verse. I love the contrast of John 10, 10. We see how the enemy lies to us. So the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his M.O. with you and I. But I love Jesus' next words. Jesus said, but I've come that you may have life and have it what? Ooh. To the full. Like what a great contrast. The enemy's going to try to pull up a chair at your table. And Jesus is going, no, 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 no. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. So we got to combat the enemy. Let me show you another lie that he will push for, towards each of us is I'm not good enough. Now, when you walked in today, you saw a lot of people smiling and people that, you know, look good and look happy. But the truth is, many of us don't feel like we're good enough. Maybe you feel like you're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. Maybe you feel like, I'm not good enough to be the parent that I should be. I'm not good enough to be married to this person. Or I'm not even good enough to be married. I'm not good enough for this job. I'm not good enough to, to even be in this church. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not good enough to volunteer in a ministry at church. No way. I'm not good enough for that. I'm not spiritual enough to be in a small group. I'm not, I know Dave keeps saying we should feast on this, but I'm just not good enough to do that. And there's all these lies that the enemy will feed to us that I'm not good enough. Here's another one he'll feed us. Uh, I'll never get over it. I'll never get over the betrayal and the breakup or the divorce I'll never get over the abuse. I'll never get over what they said. I'll never get over that. And, and if you've been having those thoughts that enemies pulled up a seat at your table, it's not your fault. It's just he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Here's another lie. Is everybody's against me. Man, everybody at work just seems like they're against me. At home, it just seems like everybody's against me. Nobody cares about me, even in my own home. This church, nobody cares about me. It's like, it's just me against the world. Everybody's against me. And then here's another one that uh, he's also fed me so many times is, I'm not going to make it through these marriage problems. I'm just not. I'm not going to make it through the anxiety attacks and the depression I'm not going to make it through these health challenges and the chronic pain. I'm not going to make it through these work problems. I'm not going to make it through fill in the blank. I'm not going to make it. So let me, let me ask you this. Who gave you that idea that you're not going to make it or that you're not good enough? Was that your, was that your good shepherd? Was that your shepherd going, whew, yeah, man, those problems, those battles you're going through are tough. I don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> Does that sound like God? No. I don't think you're going to make it. I don't think you're good enough to serve in a ministry. I, uh, yeah, I don't think you'll ever get over that. Right? So these are just our own ideas and or the ideas of the enemy. And when that happens, what do you do? What do you do when the enemy pulls up a seat at your table and he gives you this idea, this lie that's not true? What do you do? How do you get the enemy not to sit at your table anymore? How do, what do you do? First thing you do is you take authority over this table. And you go, this is my table with my king, and I'm not going to let you dwell anymore at this table in my mind. So by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the blood of the Lamb, you don't have authority to have a chair at this table anymore. And then what you got to do is you got to fight his lies with God's truth. You remember when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert? <clears throat> And the devil tempted him three times. How did Jesus fight back with him? Word. Every time, the sword of the spirit. He used the word of God. And he hit the enemy's lies with the truth. And so, when you come across these various lies like, <clears throat> uh, you know, there's something better at another table. You go, no, 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 no. No. Philippians 4 says, I can be content in all situations through Christ who gives me strength to be content. So no, I can learn to be content in this situation. So you don't have a seat at my table. Goodbye. Or the next lie. Let's say uh, I'm not good enough. No, 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 no. 
Romans 6, 10 says the same mighty power that rose Jesus from the dead is living in me and it's empowering me every day for everything I go through. So no, I am good enough with Christ. I am good enough. So you don't get a seat at my table. You guys getting this? Um, here's the next one. I'll never get over this. No, 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 no. Psalm 147.3 says, God heals the brokenhearted. My heart is hurting, but he's going to heal my heart and he's going to bind up my wounds. That's one of his promises. So you don't get a seat at my table though that I'll never get over it. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You guys get this, this next one. Everybody's against me. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. It may feel like everybody's against me, but it's not true. Romans 8.31 says, if God is for me, who can be against me? So my shepherd's for me, and that's all that matters. And you fight the lies with the truth. I'm not going to make it through this. No, no, no. Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. Psalm 23, 4, that the Lord walks with me through the valley of the shadow of death, so I'll fear no evil, so I'm okay. I got this. Me and Jesus, me plus God, that's a majority. So you don't get a seat at my table. Do you see what I mean? You guys catching this? So we got we to not just, well, I'm just praying to resist the enemy. Prayer's good, but we got to fight him with the sword of the spirit. And you got to whack him. Whop, whack him upside the head. Is anybody still listening to me right now? It's kind of quiet in here. Okay. <laughs> now, you may say, Dave, I'm not really relating to any of these lies. Honestly, I haven't been feeling those lately or at all. What about worry? Any of you guys got worry pulling up a chair at your table? Right? Anxiousness, stress. How do you respond to that? Well, you, gotta, you just got to take authority over that. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So you don't get a seat at my table. If any of you are asleep, hopefully you're awake now. <laughs> but I actually was dramatic on purpose. I want you to remember that. You got to fight the spirits of fear that come against us. We got to fight. God has not given you a spirit of fear. He's giving you a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. You think you're losing your mind? No, that's just lies from the enemy in your own flesh. You have a sound mind in Christ Jesus. That's what God promises. So you whack anxiety with that. How about this one? Uh, uh, insecurity. God, it's just, I'm so insecure, you know? It's like, no, 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 no. Ephesians 2.10. I'm God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance before I was even born. God prepared for me to serve in the ministry. God prepared me for this job. And I don't know it all, but me plus God, that's the majority, and I'm going to get through what I'm going through. I am enough with Christ and His Holy Spirit in me. And you just fight that insecurity. And you move forward despite the fear. How about temptation? Let's talk about temptation. <laughs> Here's a good temptation right here, huh? Eating, right? Or overeating. <laughs> Might as well talk about when I <clears throat> enjoy it while we're at it. <clears throat> so, <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> <clears throat> I need to end the service so I can enjoy this prop. <laughs> temptation. How do you fight temptation? Here's, man, write this down. You just say, Christ in me is greater than the wrong desires in me. Think about that. Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ in me is greater than the wrong desires in me. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has seized me what it, except what is common to man. And God is faithful to provide a way of escape so that I don't have to give in to this temptation. So no, I don't have to use again. So no, I don't have to overeat. So I don't have to overspend. No, so I don't have to lose my temper. No, no, no. Christ in me is greater than the wrong desires in me. You guys, does that make sense? That one has helped me so much with temptations. And then what about when you do give in to sin or when I give in to sin? Well, thank God your mercy follows me all the days of my life. God, I confess my sin. Thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive me of all my unrighteousness. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let's talk about anger and resentment. Tempers. Harsh words. What do we do with that? I don't know. Christ in me is greater than the wrong desires in me. I don't have to give in to this. I want to, but I'm not going to. And, and Ephesians 4 says, be angry, but don't sin. So I can be angry, but I'm not going to cross the line and sin in that anger. And you know what? Jesus said that I, you know, I need to forgive others as he has forgiven me. So I'm choosing to forgive this person that wronged me again. I'm choosing to forgive them so that I get better and not bitter. 
I don't want a bitter root to grow up inside of me. So I'm forgiving them for my own freedom, not for their benefit. And I'm going to draw some healthy boundaries with this person that keeps wronging me. You see what I mean? It's fighting because your enemy wants you in bitterness and unforgiveness. Oh, I could never forgive them. You can forgive them. That doesn't mean you have to put up with what they've done to you. doesn't mean you don't set up a healthy boundary, but you just say, no, I am not going to harbor resentment and grudges and bitterness because it steals my joy. And I'm not going to let them have that control over me. I'm forgiving them as Christ has forgiven me thousands of times. I'll let him deal with them. And oh man, it can just free you. And all of a sudden, anger and bitterness doesn't get a seat at the table. And then, you know who's at the table? It's, now it's you and Jesus. And it's like, oh, Lord, this battle's been tough. And so th- this... This psalm is so powerful. If you missed any of the messages, check it out because there's so many more promises in it. But I want to I just end on this. You know what the greatest blessing is at, at this table? It's not the banquet of his promises, though that's amazing. The greatest blessing of this table is Jesus. It's Jesus. Like Jesus is at the table with you in the middle of your battles, at work, and at home, and in your mind, it's Jesus. So when the enemy tries to pull up a chair, you just go, no, I am not gonna listen to that noise. I'm gonna keep my eyes fixated on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who's not only my King and my Lord, but he's also my heavenly Father, and he's my friend. And he's my good shepherd. And so Jesus, help me fix my eyes on you so I can keep trusting you in the middle of this battle because it's been hard. And thank you for your promises to strengthen me and encourage me in the battle. But the greatest gift, God, is you. So I'm going to keep praising you in the battle. I'm going to keep fighting the good fight. I'm going to keep following your lead. And thank you, thank you, that one day I will dwell in your house forever and ever. And we'll celebrate for trillions of years the souls that have been saved, the lives that have been changed, and all that you did in my life and my family. I honor you and I worship you with all that I have. And I'm going to keep following you all the days of my life, even when it's hard. You're my gift. You're my friend. You're my father. I love you. That's the greatest gift. And that's ultimately the greatest blessing of Psalm 23. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. If you would bow your heads with me, I want to lead us in a prayer. You wouldn't mind just closing your eyes at all of our locations. and I'm going to uh, pray this prayer for you and for I. So King Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for the blessings of Psalm 23 in your word. And Lord, you know I've been struggling with some battles, some people, some problems, and the lies of the enemy fighting against me. And you know, Lord, that sometimes I just get tired in these battles. And I just want to thank you so much for preparing for me a table, a banquet in the presence of my enemies. Thank you, God. Thank you for your desire to fellowship with me, to spend time with me, And honestly, Lord, sometimes it's hard for me to believe that you want to hang out with me and that you are with me in the battles. So help open my eyes to see your fingerprints and the way that you're fighting with me. And God, help me to comprehend your love. You love me so much. And Lord, thank you for your promises, the banquet of them, and help me to spend more time with you and your word, feasting on these promises so I could be nourished and strengthened in the battles. And Lord, when the enemy's trying to pull up a a seat at my table, God, help me recognize that because he's always suggesting for me to do the wrong things and believe things that feel true but aren't true. And God, you know, sometimes I do things that I don't want to do that I know aren't good and healthy and right. And so thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness following me all the days of my life. Help me, God, to replace his lies with your truths. And Lord, I also just pray you just forgive me for not looking at your word more. 
help me to fight the busyness and the distractions of social media and TV and just busyness. I commit to feasting on your word more regularly. As your heads are bowed, here's a question I want to ask you. Um, is Jesus your shepherd? Um, you, you may have begun a relationship with him, but maybe you're, he's not your shepherd. You haven't been following him. And um, if that's you, like no condemnation, no shame, I just encourage you to follow him as your shepherd. And if you've never begun that relationship with your good shepherd, I'll give you a chance to do that. So in a moment, I'm going to lead us in a prayer where we can begin or renew our relationship with this amazing shepherd. So um, church family, let's pray this. And if you'd like to begin or renew your relationship with Jesus, just say these words right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm stepping out of the battle right now. And I'm walking into the tent to sit with you. Thank you for the table you've prepared, prepared for me. I want to feast on your promises. And most of all, enjoy one-on-one -on -one fellowship with you. I humbly ask that you would accept me into your family. Be my Lord and Savior, my heavenly Father and friend, and be my good shepherd. I give my life to you. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's congratulate those who pray that prayer for the first time. Yeah, congratulations, man. You're in God's family, and you're a part of his flock, and now he is your good shepherd. Um, I, you know, I just kind of, before we, before you leave in the other theater, I just sense that some of you might need some additional prayer. We have a wonderful prayer team in front of theater four that would love to confidentially pray for you. You don't even have to tell them what you're going through, but I feel like for some of you, you'll, you're going to get more of, of God's presence and his help if you have some more people battling that fight with you through prayer. So go check out our prayer team in front of Theater 4. And uh, that concludes our series, Living in God's Goodness. I encourage you to join us next week. We have a, a message I think you'll find helpful. So God bless you guys. Have a good one. Hey, thank you for watching today. I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. I encourage you to share this video with a friend and don't forget you can join us live every Sunday online or at one of our New Hope Winter locations. Thank you so much for watching today. May God bless you.